Hello and welcome to the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling. Your host JP John Paz with me today. Very special guest, former four-time OVW World Heavyweight Champion, former OVW Tag Team Champion, former WWF Superstar, Mister Paul Burchill. Burchill, welcome to Two Man Power Trip. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. That's a good intro there. I like that. Thanks for uh, acknowledging all my my uh, my OVW and my tag team accolades there. <laughs> yes. And of course, today talking about uh, world classic professional big time wrestling, the reunion three cavalcade of Ooh. legends, Saturday, March 9th, uh, obviously coming up very, very soon at the OUC Shoemaker Center in Chillicothe, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, big fan fest, super show and Q&A. Tell me all about the big show coming up. Pretty excited about it, actually. Um, I attended the one back in September. And actually, um, how it came about was um, a friend of mine, Brian Asbury. We had done it. We had done a, a podcast together, a, a, you know, a bit before that. And he had contacted me about, you know, doing the sign. And I, I kind of never really wanted to do those over the years. I kind of stayed away from them, and 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 just wasn't, you know, I just kind of wasn't everything else going on wasn't interested. But I was like, oh, that'll probably be fun. It's a couple hours away from the house. Um, go down and just see and i kind of saw who was on it and i was like oh there's been i haven't seen harry and see harry in a while harry smith there's a few other people i was like okay well this will be fun and then i noticed there was a, a show and i kind of had reached out and, and thought that might be a you know something to do um and what it was you know um a couple of my well two of my kids have never seen me wrestle you know one of my oldest hey he he grew up around in the locker rooms you know his the vacation every year was WrestleMania and, and kind of just because of a busy schedule and that. But, you know, and my, my next oldest, my 13 year old, had seen me through, you know, over the years I'd done odd appearances, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to do that. And, um, you know, I got sort of got offered the chance to wrestle Gangrel, which was, was, was the perfect match for me. And, you know, I was in good shape and everything. So I, I kind of went ahead and did it and just absolutely loved it enjoyed it felt great felt just like i hadn't missed a step and it was a great experience great group of guys there that are putting it together and and it's it's well run heck of a crowd i mean it's just yeah it was it something like 2500 people there i was like okay this is this is fun this is you know it's always nice to work in front of a big electric crowd that are really into it um reminded me of, of some of the shows we do back in england the all-star shows where the crowd were just you know big crowds but super into it no one's sitting on their hands just kind of enjoying it enjoying the uh enjoying the atmosphere but went and did that and then and then of course um few things now since them have kind of um in a good way cascaded um in terms of you know wrestling and you know i just use the term dipping my toes back in um and then was you know i kind of was talking to the organizer again about this this upcoming one and i was like absolutely why not i enjoyed it so much so i'm going to um i'm going to be uh, meeting and greeting and i'm going to be in full on pirate mode yes. it is in in all the gear i'm going to be just doing it doing it doing it for the fans so we'll do the meet and greet during the day and then on the show later on um tentatively not exactly sure what we've got got organized for maybe it may be a battle royal we'll see maybe a, maybe a whatever to be honest but i will be in full-on uh pirate mode for that as well so that'll be a good time looking forward to it always enjoy doing it i've done it once one one time since wwe on a show in cleveland which was a unbelievable amount of fun and, and then really it's one of those where you look at your you look at you go why haven't i been doing this the whole time it's so yeah. fun I enjoy it so much and you know that it, it, it gets such a great reaction i get to just get to have fun with it so really excited about it yeah a few guys a few nwa guys on the show as well which will be great um and uh yeah we'll just have to have a good time I always track like other events, not WWE, but like other shows to see how well they're doing. And every year and a couple times a year now in Chillicothe at, at these shows for big time wrestling there, man, they just kill it. The crowds and everything. It just shocks me. But they have an awesome audience over there in Ohio. They have a great audience. Super, super into it. Real mix of people like pretty, pretty hardcore fit wrestling fans and then family type uh, atmosphere. But it's a it's a great show. It was a show I was really kind of happy to 
have my kids at and it you know it's a nice it's a nice show lots of lots of good wrestling it looked lots of fun real it was a really welcoming kind of fun locker room um it, it was really nice for me back in september being honest back in a locker room and being very it was very relaxing and very just a just a good time um g- great great venue i mean really really pretty uh campus i think it's at the at the university there and um it's a lovely big 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 open building and arena and nice setting it's just kind of perfect to be honest good chipotle on the way home as well so that's always good so i think my wife and i might stop there for a dinner not exactly a romantic dinner but that'll be fine so hopefully i'm uh, i'm in good shape so but i'm really looking forward to it those kind of events are just really enjoyable and from the from the uh from the rest of standpoint, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, a uh, it's really a day off. It's, it's a fun time, a great crowd, great during the day, the meet and greet, super busy. So very impressively run, uh, operation there. So, um, had a really good time. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's one of those big conventions over there yeah. in Ohio, yeah. really big wrestling conventions anywhere because the fan oh. fest, then the show, then the Q and A's, I mean, they, they yeah. do it right. Yeah. They, they run out, they run a pretty, they run a good shit. They're in a tight shit, which is good as a pirate. Um, and, um, you know, I haven't got to administer any beatings really. So uh, it'll be a good time. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm really, I really am. I'm looking forward to being back in full on pirate mode and getting some pictures with some people. Of course, go to Brown Paper Tickets and look up the Reunion 3 Cavalcade of Legends or yeah. just find a big, or excuse me, a world classic professional big time wrestling on Facebook for all the information. But it's interesting, uh, Chipotle. I just had Chipotle the other day. It's good. some great <laughs> stuff there. My hits, but yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's always a good go-to. <laughs> I just uh, that came to me because I remember driving home from it last time and being like, "Oh, I didn't eat all day. I'm gonna get some Chipotle." <laughs> Not that food is like my, my first thought, but I was like, "Oh, that'd be really good." So, and, yeah. hey, it's always fresh, so you're always getting good food there. Absolutely. Now, with you and that pirate gimmick, that that is just that's hilarious to me. I always remember back, and I can't find it in, online, but maybe I got to look harder. There was a segment, I think it was you, Palmer Cannon, Super Porky, and yeah. like Mr. Kennedy, and like all hell breaks loose basically uh, in the back there. I don't know if you remember those times with Porky and those guys. It was it was the introduction, and um, uh, we 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 shot it a couple times, and there the sort of you know, of course, what you don't see is the. Um, the, behind the cameras where everybody is sort of lined up watching and just kind of watching this absolute i'd say controlled chaos but it, that would be kind of giving it more credit than it it should get for just chaos um and i'm standing there and there's the uh, undertaker standing there just laughing and uh i, I honestly I, I i did we did we did the take and and um mr man pulls me aside and he's he said oh, it's uh it's really good he said he said but do, do you think do you think it's too funny you know do you think you should be funny and and i, and I just I, I look and i there were a few times with that where i looked i'd say something and be like what and i go i'm dressed as a pirate <laughs> and we have we have small people and i'm cutting through with a sword here what 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 <laughs> how can we not make this funny so well just because you know i think maybe you should be serious first and then and then be funny and i just am like Oh no, that's this. This is not a serious thing here. This yeah, is I'm no. really uh, I I I we this. My wife spent the week on the on the phone to museums, and it was wasn't quite as easy then to get pirate gear. You know, she spent literally the week on the phone to museums and all the. I think somewhere in Las Vegas, she got the jacket from. It was just, and I, I'm like, yeah, this isn't like serious this is this is this should probably be funny so that was kind of when i I just kind of one of those those moments where i looked and went no no it 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 should be funny because i'm i think i i legitimately think i'm a pirate like i've i've gone a little crazy so yeah (laughs) what's going on with uh with with vince that what's he thinking i mean how could it not be (laughs) funny with everything going on there it was like like you said pure chaos Pure chaos when it was presented to me um, uh, to go is a Royal Rumble actually, um, and, I, and I when I found the boss and was like, you know, I understand there's a you have an idea, and he told me about it, and I, I just went, you want me, you want me to be like Keith Richards, and I knew at the time that it was based, and he goes, he goes, yeah, but uh, but you dress the pirate, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I mean, totally, that's that makes sense, so kind of ran with it, 
but would have loved loved to have done it more would have loved to have um you know been able to continue it but i think uh um not sure the 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 bit the bigger company than wwe was uh not too happy about it. so that's where it went uh, meaning like okay. disney because it's yeah, johnny Depp. Yeah. yeah it was the disney so it wasn't uh it wasn't gonna keep going for too long on uh on like network tv so it's a shame it's, it's fine the, you know the plan was to evolve it you know make it more edgy make it you know but, but still be a very like very child and directed character you know just a fun you know just a fun kind of underneath baby face uh uh one there you know i i you know it's a lot of time and you know a lot a lot you see stuff now and you're like oh man that's well planned out at, it, at the time you know a lot of things were just kind of on the fly and you weren't communicated to with a lot of things i mean the the the, the rope the, the the entrance of the rope i had no no idea of that until the day i was doing it and the you know, someone comes to the locker room and goes man your rope's awesome and i thought he was ribbing me and i'm like what are you talking about he's like this is your rope i'm like i haven't got a rope it's like and i walk out to the arena and there's this 75 foot rope hanging from the ceiling and i'm like oh i really do have a rope cool and went and did it burn my hands the first time going that's where i realized that you had to wear gloves uh as you uh fast rope down um but yeah that was kind of how things were kind of going it was it was fun good time enjoyed it what was the experience like with the rope though were you scared after they told you so you had to go you need to go into the back and there was a there was a, a a part in the back where um ray would go was kind of his it to go to do his jump up through the stage there so i that's where i kind of go through and there was literally like a janky ladder up behind the thing i mean i was like oh this is this is so osha safe i'm sure obviously i wasn't aware of that at the time but i was like i'm not sure we've passed all those inspections here but i would go stand up and i used to joke and go oh you're killing my pop because i had to stand up there for about a minute so the crowd would see me and then and then i then it would pan to me and i'd do the do the entrance there but you just had to each each arena was completely different so it depended on the length of the uh sorry the height of the roof uh the ceiling so because they would drop it from the ceiling um w whatever arena it was so depending on the um on the height of that ceiling as to like how how long that rope was so you didn't you didn't know until you swung out how you were going to time it to land on the walkway as opposed to in the middle of the crowd and some of them were longer like you had to kind of push off and swing out and and over so that was always a thing and i just kind of um just for fun used to just wing it uh live as opposed to practicing it i just used to be like we'll just see how this goes and i would just um fast rope down and uh drop down to the floor so yeah it always went well my favorite was coming off a double decker bus at wembley um that was that was cool uh completely unsafe when i think about it now i'm like well gosh i could have really actually not not have survived that that was uh that was quite a quite a different experience so but um it was fun times we enjoyed it so it's almost like uh, it looks awesome it, it, it could be cool but it's not necessarily the safest thing uh, in the world <laughs> disaster strikes yeah basically <laughs> but i enjoyed it it was it was it was different and everything and um yeah it was, it was kind of cool because that was always the joke oh you should swing in from the ring i couldn't quite work out how how they would do that how that was going to be possible because you think of like swinging into the ring you know i always thought like a like a um we call them death slides um but like a, a, a um one of the things you slide along would have been cool and uh, kind of like suicide used to do you know in, in tna yeah. yeah until until i realized their idea was much better and much safer um and less less chance of going wrong so um i was i was fine with the rope there but it was it was cool i really enjoyed it but yeah it was just more fun to wing it wing it at the time and see how it see how things turned out see where i landed there right so. right it's like the american <laughs> gladiators had that track that you, you can go across that's right exactly <laughs> now where does that actually come from like the pirate gimmick itself like you said somebody just brought it up to you or, or, or like whose idea is it where does it kind of emanate from um we it was with the uh i was with steve regal uh tagging together and we were kind of in a bit of a i'd say like loaded tag division and we were kind of there 
um, but not really involved in anything particularly. Sort of Eminem were were the sort of the main um, bad guy team and that. And so, kind of pecking order wise, we were we were in there sort of a worker team. And and it, I, I would have liked to have done that longer. But you know, when I was initially signed, um, and when I worked for them briefly in development before I went up, um, I'd been working as a as a baby face. And one of my one of my my traits when I was hired was that I was a you know, heavier, bigger guy that could move well and uh, move well in the air and aerial. You know, now, nowadays, you see the stuff people are doing is just completely you know, stunning. Like they're just what what people can do now. But um, and that was kind of their one of their thought process was well, let's showcase his athleticism uh, more. Um, which I I wanted to stay doing what i was doing i was enjoying it i was i was kind of settling in well and i felt we had really good chemistry um and and could have could have run with that for a while um but it was kind of, kind of felt not rushed but like i would have just liked to have stuck around as a kind of british heel kind of very stereotypical um but it was fun because i was with uh Steve Regal, who was just great to great to work with, great to have as a partner, great to have sort of in your corner and and obviously get advice from. And so um, they were they they appeared they sort of seemed to be trying to look and go a bit more character based. Uh, Boogie had, Boogie had come in, and it was kind of like it made sense to have a um, uh, more of a um, you know just kind of how Scotty Too Hotty comes out, and he's you know he's he's just this fun kind of thing. It's a very known gimmick i think the idea was to be sort of you know an under baby face that was um you know that would would sort of get that pop each time you know, no matter what kind of was, was was going on at the time for them um and um it would kind of work well with with that and and you know, merchandising wasn't quite as they weren't quite as on it with merchandise now sort of everybody has a t-shirt and everything um and i think that was was an idea uh for that but it just kind of uh, it it didn't get its legs before its legs were kind of cut out from under it a little bit, but um, it, it it was fine. Everything worked out fine in the end. And on, you know, with anything, with anything in wrestling, with anything, with anything in life, really, um, it's always going to happen for a reason, and it always takes you down a particular path. Um, and that path that path led to me having the most fun I ever had in wrestling was when I was that time. You know that that stint in OVW, which was just great. And you really learn learning your craft and learning learning from your your learn from like Al Snow at the time and, and 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 not as much stuff that would you were gonna directly apply to WWE at the time and everything because you can't see the um forest for the trees because it's like oh just that that's the that's the thing but it was it was always the uh intention of I'm teaching you to work I'm teaching you so that in 15 years you're still working and lo and behold <laughs> it's it's goodness me uh, you know you uh you 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 learn to listen to uh, the, the the experienced people because usually they're right in the end, and I can say it was so. Um, that's kind of that you know that led led to me down that path and everything, and it was just fine. And you know when it was time for me to get out, it was time. I, it was absolutely one hundred percent the right time. You know it was just ready for it. Um, I'd, I'd had a brief um, time where before coming, there'd been different um plans and ideas and shelved at the last minute i had gonna come in as part of the uh, new breed in ecw which was kind of my preferred thing was to uh come in there as kind of um one of the enforcers there um because the ripper thing with in obw is going really well and kind of transfer it would transfer pretty well you know if presented um and you know the work was there um but um i had also done a time where i spent the summer um uh, I think it. Well, I think it was with the SmackDown brand. It was myself and Dave Taylor tagging together for the whole time. We did a couple of international tours. Um, we we that was fantastic. First off, just a just a wonderful person, great person to wrestle with, to travel with. Just not even the knowledge is unbelievable. Just just a, as a person, as you know, how much fun you have but how much fun we had in the ring and how easy it was. You know, we would literally just insert baby face team, whether it was Festus or, um, or, um, or Ray or, uh, or the majors brothers or so like it would be, and we did it. <laughs> we, we come out opening match as, as the, as the national anthem was playing, how we come and interrupt it. 
to sing our own version of the national anthem just the just the hatred coming off the crowd especially especially like in the south and then they interrupt and away we go and it was just it was like spoon feeding it was so good so easy we were good together um but and i you know went had gone we had gone to them and said you know we, we want to be in this team and the um consensus was that they wanted me as they saw me as a singles guy and that's kind of where we were with that and um but i would have loved to have um we were we were we were looking at options of not with that company of how we could get out of the time and and possibly do what we were doing because it was working so well and it was so easy and it was just it was transferable to whichever tv show at the time um but we were kind of a little um tied into where we were and sort of rode that out but it would have been nice to have um to have presented that um you know uh <laughs> as a as a as a sort of a full-time thing but that was okay it was a good time we had fun did a, like i said did a couple of really fun tours and um enjoyed ourselves almost like a new age uh, blue bloods when regal That's and exactly. taylor were together yeah. in wcw yeah yes yes and it had been um i think uh, it was gonna be actually uh was gonna be me and drew um with dave in our corner um and then like i remember hearing about it maybe the week leading up um that actually they were going to go with him in singles i think with i think with dave initially i think his his run there on tv was kind of short ish it was kind of uh didn't last too long and then he he he, he went away for a little bit um but that yeah that was it i think i was with i think actually i was with aaron stevens at the time uh, at the gym and and uh and i got the call and i was like oh that sucks I, and i was just like oh okay well that then you know some you know, we'll we'll do something else, but I, I was I was looking forward to, to uh, tagging up with Drew. So you know, is anybody that knows would loves him? He's great, and he's a great worker, and um, just he was he was just fun. So that would have been fun to do, and especially with Dave and Dave with us, and that would have been quite a rabble traveling, I'm sure, uh, together. So that would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> we had very, had some stories there, but um, yeah, that was uh, that was kind of what it was, but it wasn't too it wasn't too bad. Hey, and Drew is doing pretty damn good right now on TV. He's on fire right now. He might be their best character. All right, he's just a just an absolute unit. It's just ridiculous. He's so good. Just, just tight and uh, looks just looks like a killer. Looks like a killer. It's great. Really like it. Really enjoy watching him. You know, certain guys you you just make a point of, of trying to see and trying to watch and everything. And he's he's definitely one. He's probably that that for a lot of people where they're like, oh, he's I'm, I'm going to watch this. It's, it's, it's uh. This is going to be good. It's going to be something. Something's going to happen here. So, um, yeah, he's he's killing it. It's been great, great resurgence. I, I love, you know, and I, I you stepped away from wrestling for so many years and everything, and um, and really got didn't have any knowledge or didn't follow anything whatsoever, whatsoever. So I was very once I started tuning back in and just seeing things, I was like, oh, that it was real. Some of the stuff was really surprising. I just was like, oh, this per and I I just had really no, I didn't recognize a lot of people and everything, but um. You know, when these guys go away, and it's it's so cool that this the whole environment now where somebody can go and now make make themselves reinvent, make whatever it is, make themselves a star, what whatever, or, or or just change things up, and they can do it without being attached to just the one place. And that was always the thing. You know, we were there was only really the one main place that we saw that we so you were kind of, you know have this and eat it and you just were kind of like okay kind of thing you know had the had the um had the environment been different when i finished up in 2010 i'd have probably um stayed in longer and had other uh options that i saw as viable options for myself that i would have wanted to do you know um it, it wasn't appealing to go and um go to japan eight nine times a year um it for me it wasn't um at the time TNA wasn't really something I was looking at just because I was coming off 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 WWE TV and just didn't I just I just didn't feel like I, I at that time would have a ton to offer and it didn't it was just something, it wasn't something that interested me I was a little done with you know wrestling in general um and not in any kind of really bad way you just I was ready to start moving on with my life and doing other things and that's just the that's just the direction and decision I made um 
but now you see you know i just i just uh in i was in fort lauderdale for nwa um uh, maybe a month ago and I, I caught up with matt cardona who we were real close in wwe and i was just like i'm just killing it doing great everything but guys do that you know like like drew had done that where you know you're cast aside and you're kind of not not needed and and then you you make them want you and he's an, another example of that of like they have to have him you know it, it just it's really cool that there there's the amount of work for people out there and experience getting on tv like you know i go to the nwa tv tapings now and i'm just it's so well run and so professional and such a breath of fresh air and you know for me and some of the guys that were say in wwe together we're just so we're all we're so, you know and i you know it took a you know i had that they always called it and troy to trevor murdoch called it almost like the wwe ptsd he said you can't believe this is just this is okay this is good this is a an incredibly welcoming locker room but from a different perspective you've got guys that say have done some things previously but then you've got guys that are kind of on the way up and girls that are on their way up and it's just this uh, this ability to be on tv be used to working cameras be used to a tv format it's like i said it's very well organized with very schedulized you know and how, how it should be because it's a professionally run operation and it's such good experience for people now that they can go to these companies that are film and tv whether it's for an app whether it's for a streaming service whether it's for pay-per-view or whatever it is any of these independent promotions that are doing it but it's just this great experience that people can get um and and, and so, you know and and then transfer that eventually and hopefully build their resume and um and you know and just kind of get that get that knowledge and everything it's it's really really a really good thing and that the whole the whole environment's great it really is just talking to my buddy last night, Dr. Tom Pritchard. We we're talking about the uh, mm -hmm. NWA on the CW app, how easy yep. it is. Because sometimes Peacock, when you go on there for WWE, you're like, oh, God, which one is it? And what, what year? <laughs> like, I don't know, it's a pain in the ass. But I was just fooling around with the – it was oh, free, by the way. And I'm going, oh, Premier League or not Premier League. I'm going to watch Premier League. So when the times when I do get to, I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to watch football. Yep. <laughs> so but it's great. CW app, it's free. Like they literally – you take two seconds download the app i mean why wouldn't you then you've got it you can tuesday morning it it, it comes on around nine o'clock and you've got it and you just sit and watch it it's just it's just cool it's just a completely different look the 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 whole the whole um presentation is different you know it, it, it goes you know i heard someone talking about this uh, months and months ago and they said you know people generally not, not really like our attention spans not really there anymore no it's not that it's that we have you know i'm a I'm a father of four children. Uh, I have a, I run households and I just kind of, I, um, I, I don't want to sit and watch and watch and watch. I mean, I don't really have a super interest to watch a ton, but an hour long show, uh, four or five matches, I'm going to, I'm going to get that in somewhere, especially on an app. And actually then being on the app was such a it's great thing. First off, it's a, it's a it's a bigger audience but it's made it so easy you can sit there on your phone watching it you know it it, it works out really well and they like i said there it's a different product there's a heck of a lot of talent there like there i mean there is some really talented guys and girls there that are working their butts off and they keep bringing you know they keep building that roster they you know little at little add-ons little you know here and there some experience levels some new and up-and-comers but like i said if for some it's a, say uh uh i hate to use the word stepping stone it, it's but it's it's a it's a great place to kind of um learn things and, and and kind of present themselves to maybe move on and a great place for your guys that are just wanting to you know do something you know good good quality good people great locker room well-run company excellent support staff you know you go there and you feel like you're part of a, re a you know a wrestling company you know a, a, a professionally run wrestling company it's a it's really good i would i would i would push anybody to seek it out and give it a try it's different it, it's it's the way it's presented it's got the grittiness and it feels like 
an NWA event there. It, it, I love it. Like I, I really enjoy. I enjoy being there, and that's why I've. Uh, that's why I signed on with them, and that's why I'm, I've committed to, to to being with the company. Um, thankfully, you know, I they they gave me an opportunity to kind of showcase. Um, you know where I was at. I mean, I definitely, I had, a, I had some, uh, you know, some people pulling for me in the company just to kind of come in, and I, I wanted to kind of give it a, not, not give it a go again, but get, you know, I've got, I, I took some years out there, but felt like I had a lot of wrestling left in me, and, um, and I'm really enjoying it, really enjoying it, enjoying the matches. Um, you know, you, you watch NWA, and you're gonna see two dudes or four or two girls with a fight in like they are fighting it looks like a fight and it looks like you've got you know you you've got men on all the companies but it looks like you got some gritty men in there hitting each other hard and it's it's pretty appealing i could see that being appealing to you know wrestling or non-wrestling fans because they're like okay well this looks like these two really are like you know hurting each other and you know sometimes we are Absolutely. How did you get into the NWA anyway? Like, did Billy uh, scout you, or what was going on? I, uh, get in? My, like I said, I had I had a few people there. You know, I, I you re remain, you know, stay, stay friends with a lot of people in the business. Even though I stepped away myself, and you know, a good friend of mine, Kevin Keenan, uh, um, is referee there. We were in WWE together. Fantastic referee, just like fantastic referee. Um, needs you know, needs to be showcased in it. Aaron Stevens. Um, and then a couple other guys I kind of met met through people um, that, that were kind of with, within the company and just kind of uh, just put a feel feeler out really and said you know is there much interest I had I had spoken to Aaron a few years before um, he had kind of reached out to me about possibly coming in for a short little little start nothing was like in you know in concrete but said what would be your thoughts and it, I think it was to work with with somebody for a few shows to just they needed a you know big you know, just a, a heavyweight that could move kind of thing. Um, and it, it didn't actually pan out. Um, but I kind of, I became aware of the, the, the product and, and just found it really there. Um, some of their, their like docu series on like Tim storm. And that was just so interesting. It was yeah. so well produced. The production of the, the production of, of their general TV product is so high and so well done that, you can't help but be impressed, but kind of reached out and said, what are your thoughts? And then got was, you know, I had, I had spoken, to, uh, I had um, communicated with um, Mr. Corgan some years before when he was involved with TNA, when I was, I was kind of thinking about maybe um, seeing if there was some, uh, I, I liked the schedule. I liked the schedule. I could still, cause I, you know, I have a, I work full time. Um, I am um, in, in, in the medical field. I am, um, but I, I'd reached out and said, you know, what would be your thoughts? And I had sort of some ideas and creatively I've got, I've always been very kind of had a lot of good ideas and, and, and be creative, the creative process for me. That's something I would have liked to have moved into more. Um, and then, you know, it was, a, it was a case of yes, you know, come down and we'll see at the time, the timing wasn't going to be right. Actually, uh, funny enough, my wife was uh, in the latter stages of uh, one of the pregnancies so i was like it's just not the time to be doing this i was i was kind of in some pretty um pretty heavy schooling at the time so i just kind of like was like no i don't think so i think it all i'm just going to kind of you know i don't need to scratch that itch and then just let it go away and then i i reached out to Mr. corgan again and he he's so um welcoming and um the energy you get from him and i was like oh it's a very very positive conversation and then i uh, eventually put me in touch with that uh, with pat kenny who uh, who runs uh their talent relations there and we kind of put together kind of a, a plan to come down and and have a look and I, I got down there and they had they had sort of plans off the bat and um it was, uh, it was a short little uh thing to do but that you know was kind of gonna showcase some strengths and i you know they liked what they saw and you know, we sort of uh, continued on and then kind of it developed into them sort of, you know, offering me to kind of come on with them, you know, as a as a sort of a full time guy with them, which is a again, it, it works out well, the schedule. Um, it's it's really good wrestling. It's like I said, a great company to work for and, and very well run. And like I said, all of the people that you deal with the off camera are just so so professional and it's just just a well run, well run ship. And you know, we've got 
um, in two weeks' time, uh, Dothan, Alabama. We've got our Hard Times um, TV tape in there. Used to be a pay per view, but um, it's now you know, they'll they'll take those for their TV show. Power on it will be on Tuesdays on the CW app. So going into that, um, that'll be a fun time. So I got that um, in a couple weeks. Um, you know, it's uh, apparently like Dothan's a big big NWA town, and I, I know off the bat they sold a very very high amount of tickets and anybody wants tickets nwliveevents.com just so you know but um that's going to be a big one i think apparently it's a beautiful arena in this it's going to look really nice on tv um no idea what i have coming up there um we just filmed um about a month ago five weeks ago i think it was um at fort lauderdale and the next day we filmed in tampa for our power uh tapings there so we got those coming up and I think they'll lead into that event. So um, I think everything will just kind of flow in together. And I believe uh, we got, um, we'll be in Tampa in April. I think April, um, April, April 13th, I think in Tampa for a power taping. Um, and then they've got the, the Crockett Cup coming up, um, which is the big two day tag tournament. And then um, NWA 76, I believe it's at the end of August. And they're both at cities that they haven't been held in before. They haven't, they haven't run in before. So I think, they're pretty excited about where where they're gonna be. Uh, we don't know, but um, I think um, it'll be somewhere pretty cool. So we're looking forward to that. Um, yeah, a bit coming up with them and everything. So you know, we're pretty excited and just see kind of what what what's in the works for them. And like I said, they're constantly adding to that roster. They're adding, you know, and they're very, you know, they they'll it seems like they'll cherry pick, you know, this person in and bring them in and. You know, we'll 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 see somebody, and we're like, oh, they'd be work really well here. So, you know, I'll just while while I'm while I'm there, and I'm still of use, I absolutely will um, continue with what I'm doing. Um, you know, we'll just just see see how that goes, and everything. But um, you know, they they have their their three now um, um, territories now, so they're bringing back that territory system. They've got NWA Chicago have their first event on the eighth eighth of March. You've got Exodus Pro out of Cleveland, and you've got um, nwa jcp which is out in the south there sort of the knoxville kind of um out that tennessee area there so they're it's it's all coming together for them i think you know there's there's plans and um you know always tell people give it a shot you know go just tune in and see what you, what you think so it's uh it's it's really nice to be part of it um and again it it it, it, it like a, you know i used to dip in my toes back in and it's 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 uh it's fun it's fun and as long as i keep enjoying it i'll keep doing it and there's a hidden gem i feel like they're the the, the national heavyweight champion silas mason who is kind of the, the next terry gordy if you will although if you look at iron claw he played terry gordy obviously but i, I love him. i feel like hidden gem big monster he, guy good lord hey I, I i was talk, i was talking to him a, a month ago and uh we we we, we worked with each other and I, just to get i i here's one one i'd seen and been like i would love to work with him i just love big throws lumber just hard hitting just really great character i said to him i said you're my wife's second favorite wrestler i said you might be almost first <laughs> yeah, I said, you know. but he uh he hits hard he is and he is very very talented uh and hungry and um you know working hard you know i know i know he's march 8th in uh, chicago he's 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 on that event i know he does a lot with jcp um um, he's, he's going to be one that's going to be hard to, um, to knock off the top of the top of the mountain there with that national heavyweight title. It's just, it's, uh, him and I had a heck of a heck of a physical match. I'll tell you, I'm still like feeling some of the, <laughs> the after effects of that and was definitely feeling it the next day. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, um, he's, he's. He's definitely one, you know, they say one to watch. I mean, watch him now. He's, he's pretty, pretty impressive there. That whole Southern six act is great as well. It does. It's a really kind of, it's a they, very smooth, very, very good. Very, um, they're there. They have got definitely got something going on there. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of town there, but not, I mean, it's not the only hidden gem there. That's why I said to people, I say, watch that. You need, you, know, you have guys with the experience level, like, you know, any roster that has like a Trevor Murdoch and Mike Knox, and then you've got like Mecca Wolf who's worked everywhere. You've got Colby Carino who, you know, you think of Colby Carino being like, oh, he's, you know, he's been around like 15 years. I mean, he's, he's, 
knows what he's doing. There's some, it's just a lot of, a lot of really good talent there. You know, you got Aaron Stevens, you got Blunt Force Trauma, you got, I mean, it's just so many people and just so many good, good workers there and the people that are working for the good of making the company more and everything. And it, and it is, it, it's, it's really, um, it's really impressive. Now, just changing gears for a second, because I know you were obviously big time, a four time OVW champion. I mean, you were there for a couple of years. You, you, you know, you obviously know that land very well down there in, in Ohio Valley. But have yeah. you watched wrestlers at all? Have you watched that documentary on, on Netflix about OVW? I haven't seen it. No, and I should, that's terrible. I haven't seen it. I just don't watch a lot of TV. <laughs> It's, I don't, I don't get the, the chance to, I'm sure at some point I'll watch it. I heard it was very good. Uh, you know, my, my cousin and few, uh, many other people have seen it. So it's excellent and everything. So, um, I, I know, I know as a company they are doing, they're killing it. Like it is there. You, you see week after week after week, the, the, the stuff they're putting on and the people they're using and bringing in and the talent, um, you know, it's very, very very impressive there like they've really they're really making that into one of the places to be and again it's another example of go there and work on tv go and like that's where we all learned to do it that's where we learned we learned more of that territory style of work because when i was down there we were working three or four house shows a week and doing tv so we were we were pretty pretty busy you know but you were going you know, when I was the heavyweight champ, you know, you're going 35, 40 minutes each night, you know, and you're going with like fantastic guys. You know, you're in with um, Sean Spears one night or you're tagging me, myself and Stu or Wade Barrett, you know, against Cole Cabana and Matt Seidel. It just it was all these different uh, situations you could be in where you were just getting better and better and better. And you get better by being in with people that are as good or better than you that's how you get good but you watch the stuff on OVW and you're like this is really really good and again if any one that's got aspirations of of making it to one of the big companies or getting seen like go work in OVW go go try to try to get on their show I mean you go and show up with your bags and and how or try and get booked or something but you know that's that's where a lot of these people are kind of getting seen and people are knowing about them. You know, they're, they're, um, they're on there every week. You know, you learn your, you know, how to work on TV and um, it's, it's really growing. And I don't see OBW not increasing their popularity and their product there. Cause I know they've, they've kind of got things squared away um, financially and with the right people there. And you have, I mean, you, you, you have Al Snow run in it. So you, you're, it's, it's, the product's going to be good. The product's going to be good. The product's going to be interesting, you know. And then I believe they 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 brought in Nikki James to help uh, yep. run run that women's division, which I know their women's division is pretty 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 good there as well. So um, yeah, it's um it's a pretty pretty impressive looking uh, setup there. When you were down there, who was the booker? Was it Cornette or Heyman or maybe a mix of both? Um, well, very, very first, when I first got there, it was, it was, it was Jim Cornette, uh, brilliant, just, you know, very methodical about things. And I, I'm sure it was probably frustrating for him where he's being told week after week, you need to get this guy on TV and to do this, but it doesn't fit with the, you know, cause he, he's obviously one of those that books out. So, you know, this is going to happen in six months. This is going to happen in three months. We can't just, you know, we don't just shotgun these things or we don't just put time into somebody and then they're gone, you know? And um, I'm sure, <laughs> I can't imagine how frustrating that would have been. Um, you know, when you got down there, it wasn't just, oh, you, that's great. You're signed. Congratulations. You probably won't be on TV for months you might work some dark matches and you'll work the live events I said, but you're not just going to get thrown on, you know, it doesn't matter who you were and who you are or whatever. If you, there's a, there's a plan and that's how it goes. So, but he's just, he's brilliant. Just, I uh, just, he just the knowledge and the ability. I mean, I imagine having someone like that book in your company. It just, it's going to be a great, I mean, I know he booked Ring of Honor and it was great. Um, and then, um, uh then it was paul Heyman for a bit uh and then he transitioned into al 
Al Snow was booking, which I thought, and I credit Al Snow. I mean, he, with, with, with a lot of my, my later success was, you know, he, he, he gave me, he gave me the ball and I, you know, he gave me, and I ran with it, you know, kind of put the, put the title on me and in and, and the manner that I did it, you know, it, I think the first time I won the belt was probably my favorite time because it was such a heel, such a, just a nasty, nasty way of doing it. You know, I think, uh, the baby face had chased the heel for months and finally beaten him. But I had that, that almost money in the bank, uh, uh, ticket and and took it and it was it was great <laughs> it's um but i enjoyed it i loved working with al I, I loved it you know and it is one of those where you don't need to get a ton of feedback it's literally you come back and thumbs up or you know give me the nod kind of thing kind of a lot like it is in wwe where you know you're not going to get a lot and you just get the nod and you know as long as you're getting the nod and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing um you know you things are things will be good usually but um that was uh that was i enjoyed working on it it was fun when you did get called up, who's the person that calls you up? Would it be Johnny Ace at that point? Like when you do get called up to the main roster? Um, it's just a different different times. I mean, you uh, sometimes you'll just get at a time like Howard Finkel would call you and say you have travel for this week, right. and you said so. A lot of time, so a lot of time you you're getting called up, but you don't know you're getting called up. You're just being coming to TV, or you're just being on the road. So you've come off um, you come off a, a series of of house shows. And then be at the TV event, and then they'll come up to you at five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, you're going to debut tonight, or you're going to do, you know, doing this tonight. And they'd be very kind of lazy fair about it, which you were just like, okay. But um, there oftentimes wasn't a ton of, and that to me, it never felt like there was a lot of thought put into it. It's just like it got brought up, and I mean, okay, let's add it in, kind of thing. Um, I kind of went like that, you know. Um, but you know, so you, sometimes you just got to go off the fly, and that's part of wrestling. I mean, if you can't, if you can't, um you know, do anything on the fly. You're, you're, you know, that's a, that's a, that's the art of it. You've, 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 you've got to, you know, okay, this is what we got to do. You got two minutes and I need you to tell the story and you start talking and you just start talking. We do it at NWA a lot. It, it's just these on the fly at the podium or in front of the camera with the interviewer. All right. Yeah. Uh, give me 90 seconds to hit these points or don't, we don't even give you that. And you just, you just go and you just, hit it first time or hit it second time, whatever. And that's kind of what you would do. Same thing with matches. You know, I, I had, when I was uh, coming up and it was just kind of on the road before I had even debuted the first time I got uh, thrown into a dark match with, uh, with Jimmy Snooker. Um, but we were given um, four minutes notice. We weren't even dressed. We wow. literally ran to get our, as, as we're dressing, we're like, and we just went straight out there and it was one of those where like oh that was a test i think we passed because we we had a really good match so called called in on the fly you know at a uh, on a dark match on, on raw so you know just kind of you know you, you kind of had to you know that always you always got to be kind of ready for whatever they're going to ask you to do and throw out and always say yes so that was kind of how it was um you know sometimes you get you you, you get whoever was uh one of the people in talent relations would call you or Sometimes it would be somebody at, you know, you're at practice and you get pulled. I mean, I got pulled from practice when, in my early times because they said, hey, you've got to get home now, go pack a bag. You're getting on a plane to uh, Buffalo tonight and then you're driving to Toronto uh, to go to do Raw tomorrow. Um, and that was when I think I'd been in the country about two months. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. okay. Oh, okay, well, all right. So what time do I fly? And they're like, it's in about two hours. <laughs> you got to run back. <laughs> pack a bag and get to the airport and, and go and pick up a rental car. So it was like, Oh, okay. So that was a, that was a good one. That was a fun well, time. Wel welcome to Debbie the bees. Damn. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Just part of, you know, what you did and, you know, and in anyone that they'll same kind of thing and they've all got different, uh, similar type stories of just, you know, some of the, but that's just how it is. And that's, you know, obviously being a wrestler, you know, you, you're going to travel, you're going to do, you're going to do, certain things and sometimes it's in the drop of the hat sometimes you know you're 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 standing there and they need you to run out there and do a dark match they need you to run out there and do so you just got to kind of be be ready for whatever you know i always ask wrestlers this because i'm so curious do you like being like paul burchill the very serious you know the man from england you know like the regal type character the ripper type character not not that not, not that gimmick per se, but like that tough character, or do you like more like the pirate stuff, more the comedian stuff? Cause you know, less bumps, easier to work the craft. Like, which do you like working better? Um, 
Well, it, I, I've worked a lot of my time in wrestling as a, as a bad guy, you know, when I, for a lot of time, still a lot of time in England, uh, and it was, it was back and forth, uh, in Japan a little bit. That was, and that was more of a good guy, but really I've always liked that sort of funny enough to give you like a sort of, um, not really a, a non-committal answer that more in between. And that's kind of what I was doing in OVW as a rep. It, I wasn't telling you I'm a good guy or I'm going to, I'm going to hit hands. I said it was more the circumstances. And I think that's more with modern wrestling. It's the circumstances. What circumstance are you in? You know, and I think a, pro, a, 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 a mistake I made when I first became a pirate was I was like, Oh, I have to be a baby face. I have to work like a baby face. And, and so your, your in-ring style changes and it's not you. So I've made a very specific point of, yes, I'm a, I'm a good guy in the NWA and I, I will, will continue to be. Um, but I'm still gonna, <laughs> I'm still going to work how I work. You know, it's still hyper aggressive. I'm still, if there's an opportunity, I'm going to take it. I'm still going to do that. So I, I kind of like both, but I do enjoy, I, you know, I've always enjoyed uh, as a bad guy. Um, I like to interact. I always enjoyed the interaction with the crowd and I like to wind people up. And I, I think I work well as a, a bad guy because of my aggression. Um, you know, I injured my knee while in WWE uh, right at the start of the pirate thing. And it kind of changed my in-ring style. And I had to almost do a, like a, a 180 with my style and i just what i did i just turned up the aggression like tenfold um and it and i think it stood out um so i enjoy it but then i enjoy doing like as the pirate like what i will i am looking forward to the 9th of march at chilla coffee being the pirate and just enjoying it and embracing it you know i'm a i think i'm a pretty approachable nice person in real life so it kind of more it's more me when I'm out there because I'm out there having fun. And I, I do want, I do want to high five kids, you know, I do want to hug the grandmas and, you know, it just kind of, it, it's, I, you know, that, that definitely plays more into my, my actual personality and my stuff in the NWA, you know, it kind of is a nice, it's a nice uh, bridge to that where I'm not glad hand in and everything, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get the uh, audiences and the crowd and the watching people's respect. And that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm coming from. You know, I'm going to, I want to get your respect and I want to get you to, you know, be behind me because of, of who I say I am and who I'm being and how I'm working. So that's kind of the plan. I got a little black thing to the side there yeah, on my screen, but, um, but yeah, that's kind of more, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, it, it's kind of coming at it from an aspect of you don't know me. Um, I, I've been away a long time, you know, for a lot of them, they wouldn't know, my past stuff or if they did oh yeah him i'm trying to now i'm sort of starting i've started from sort of uh from, from ground zero and i'm trying to you know get people to get behind me and respect me and i'm trying to do it through my work there so um that's kind of and and what i'm going to tell you I'm, I'm all about you know i i my whole my whole reason for wanting to you know get back into some wrestling uh, to a, to an extent was, you know, I want my, I want my kids to, I want to, wanted a different legacy of, of wrestling. I don't look back at a lot of my WWE time. I'm like, Oh, I really hit my potential. No. And I walked away. I kind of left, left the business before, you know, I kind of reached that potential at maybe my peak years. So I'm kind of trying to kind of rewrite, rewrite a bit of my wrestling, uh, my wrestling story and my, my journey and the NWA, has been absolutely perfect for that. As we hit the wind down and head towards the finish, if somebody wanted to look you up on YouTube, which I know is obviously uh, the most popular thing to do these days, and they want to say, hey, playlist of your best matches, what matches should they be looking up for Paul Burchill? Um, I would say probably, um, I I remember at a time where things started to kind of change for me. I'd, I'd managed to get myself onto ECW, which is where I wanted to be. Um, Freddie Prince Jr. was writing for us at the time and he had, oh, wow. he had pushed very hard for me. And he came in and we were like, oh, it's, you know, he was writing for the for us and very nice, very nice guy, very knowledgeable. And it was stunning his knowledge of your wrestling history. He, he was, he's talking about all this stuff in England and OVW and I'm like, he's like, yeah, well, you're doing this right now in OVW. And I'm like, this guy's really like up on his, like he really 
this is like a fan and a guy that like knows wrestling, but he had, he had wanted, he said, you know, ECW, and I'm like, yes, I, please, please get me the ECW, which a lot were like, oh, ECW. And I'm like, I want to be somewhere where I've got, I'm, I'm showcased and I've got time. And I managed to get over there and I was doing a backstage promo every week. I would do something and I would have a match and a lengthy match and I'm working with Christian or I'm working with different, different people. And I'm like, this is great because I'm getting to do, this isn't a, this isn't a six minute match that's being cut to two minutes. I'm getting time here and I'm really getting to show, you know, um, Stephanie McMahon was producing all of my backstage promos um, and all of the interactions. So I was kind of, it was going really well and I just was really hitting my stride I'd, I'd hit my stride again as a worker, like I was in like a zone. Um, and I remember then they brought me to England to wrestle uh, Evan Bourne, who was kind of real hot at the time as a, as a baby face and was really kind of on an upward trajectory. And I was definitely being positioned as that guy, I guess, under the main event that you got to go through, kind of you're going to go through a war kind of thing, um, which was, was a great position because I always saw myself as a good good utility roster member and you know i can i'm gonna i'm gonna look after you it's gonna you it's gonna look good it's gonna feel good you know you're gonna go through a war um and i wrestled him we went out there at wembley o2 arena and i think we went out with like 11 minutes or something like that, maybe nine minutes 11 minutes and we're kind of coming into sort of the we're getting ready to kind of start closing things down and the referee is like you guys have got four more minutes and he just kept add in time we went like 26 minutes i believe um in the end from what we thought so we all i mean it was just kept just adding and and going on the fly and going to this match and um i guess vince was in the back he was enjoying it so much he just kept adding time and i'm just beating the hell out of him and i mean i'm killing him um and i just remember it, it was just it was just great great feeling i got in the back he's and he stood up and he's like you were like any his best compliment. He said you were like a shark attacking out there, and I was like, "That's what I'm going for." And then the next week, we're at Madison Square Garden, and we wrestle each other again on Superstars. And it was a few weeks later, and one of the more most senior wrestlers had come up to me, and we we're talking. He's like, "He said, you know, apparently you're you're right on there. You know, you, you, they're what they're you're heading up." Um, and he said, "Do you know why you uh, why you wrestled Evan Bourne for the second you know second time in a week the other week at Madison Square Garden?" I was like, "No," he goes. He said, he said, Vince, apparently said in the meeting, he enjoyed the match so much. He just wanted to see it again. <laughs> like, wow. Awesome. Okay. And then, you know, and you know, I liked my, um, so that was where things were really turning for me, uh, as a worker there and everything. So it was, it was great. And I really was enjoying things. And then I, I worked with hurricane, which was a fantastic time working together and our, um, mask versus career match, uh, at, in Philadelphia was long was, match too. Yeah really really good match we uh we, we we just gelled well together hot hot crowd uh nice angle and everything um yeah some of that sort of stuff it was good and then if you're seeing stuff though cw app nwa yes, check that <laughs> out yes yes of course uh nwa the cw app but gotta mention world classic professional big time wrestling the reunion three cavalcade of legends saturday march 9th at the ouc shoemaker center in chillicothe ohio, ohio ohio right there i'll be doing meet and greets pictures um signing stuff taking pictures i'll have a, I'll have a cool cool backdrop and everything so it'll be a nice picture to get and i'll be in all my all my pirate stuff and then later in the show you know hopefully some people to high five me yes yes uh check it out on facebook of course for big time wrestling reunion three cavalcade of legends or go to brownpapertickets.com where can everybody find you by the way where are you on socials i see instagram where else yeah uh at real virtual um and then um, I do have I do have Facebook. Um, I had to put up the link there. Do you know what? Um, my son my son runs all of that, and I'm not sure of what the uh, what oh. the uh, actual uh, thing is for it. But I'll I'll put it all up. But at, at Chillicothe, I know I'm going to have information on how to access all of that and um, and merchandise, t-shirts. Um, we're bringing out i got a a new logo and then we're doing a couple of different different things um and i've got some new different eight by tens to uh to to do uh at, at chillicothe on the 9th of uh march be there big time wrestling um chillicothe ohio 
Uh, so, um, yeah, there'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of fun. A lot of, uh, some uh, some pirate eight by tens and stuff, and then obviously uh, uh, pictures and everything. Nice, nice. And maybe they'll get a chance to see a descendant of Blackbeard the pirate uh, when they go to Ohio. So, if they go, they will <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much uh, for all thank the time. They really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.